Welcome to Ask Phoebes, a weekly address where your questions on crypto and zero chain are answered. I'm Derek Fiebiger, Director of Operations for Zero Chain, and I thank you for joining me. Let's hop into things. What's up, what's up, what's up? What's up? Thanks for um, thanks for joining me. I can't believe it's already uh, already middle of March. We're just we're just cruising cruising through the year. Um, so uh, we'll start out with some quick zero chain highlights here um, because we got we got a lot of questions in the Reddit thread, which is um, it's amazing. It's uh, it's nice to have um, have some have some insightful questions that I can I can run through. So this one this 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 uh, this ask feeds might be a little bit longer. Which can either be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on um, how much you like uh, like listening. Um, but um, but yeah, let's let's do some quick highlights, and then I'm going to make this really quick. Um, so uh, we're really close to launching Alpha. Um, Zero Box app is looking awesome. Um, we added a new logo to it, and we're updating our our original logo. Um, with some changes, the, the zero is gonna have a slash in it now, so people don't think it's O chain. Um, so we're just kind of like fine tuning everything with um, with the UX and um, just how um, how our branding um, looks. And last week showed you the website, um, but I'll kind of show you a sneak peek of our updated zero box logo and just a couple different screenshots of. Um, of, of what the um, the flow of our zero box app will look like and I'll give those to you right now it's pretty sweet pretty pretty awesome um, so uh, yes um, I um, we added that new logo and um, and there's that sneak peek and, and we're still waiting on iOS approval, I believe, for Zerobox app. So the the um, it could come any time now, um, but definitely not long. Um, I asked Saswata if we can expect it tomorrow, um, like um, like we were targeting last week, um, and he didn't rule it out. So um, I'm not saying it will launch tomorrow. So make sure that uh, you're not misinterpreting what I'm saying. Um, I'm just saying it's not out of the question um, and it's it's coming fast so um, there's there's also a small possibility that if I O if Apple doesn't approve the zero box app in time um, we might release the um, like the consensus part first so, um, like before that way we're not just waiting on the zero box app but um, we'll definitely be pushing the new website out and alpha um, and the zero box app like really 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 soon um but the um the consensus protocol um that the, the test net for the consensus protocol and the um the website aren't um aren't we're not depending on the launch of that on anyone else um whereas with the zero box app we are kind of at the mercy of apple um but um Saswata seemed confident that that will get approval really soon so um so I'll definitely be letting the community know when I get a concrete date and time because I'm just as anxious to play with it as everyone else. Um, so that yeah, it's not like I'm just trying to like tease or anything. I'm I'm waiting um, anxiously as well. So um, it's coming. You just uh, yeah, you guys are used to being patient by now, so I don't really have to um, like uh, like reiterate that. Um, now. Um, Let's hop into the questions. All right. Um, question one. Um, this is from Odysseus to OCN. Um, his question is, I really like this project and have been waiting to buy in, but I still can't. All the exchanges that ZCN is presently on demand KYC as well as not allow my jurisdiction. I live in the United States, so it's not like I'm from North Korea or anything. I was hoping to find out if there are plans to get on an exchange in the very near future that allows more diverse investors. Not talking Binance or anything, but something like Hotbit or LA Token or whatever. Just something that allows more people like myself the ability to buy ZCN. Um, thank you, Odysseus to OCN. 
um, for the question. So uh, a couple things. I'm not sure what um, I know. I know Bitfinex you can't get on, um, but um, but Galaxy and IDEX right now you can get on as a U.S. citizen. Um, Galaxy will actually let you trade and has very minimal KYC requirements, like like very very minimal. I think all you need is just uh, uh, just just like a, an ID number. Um, but you can definitely trade on there as a U.S. citizen. Um, you can't do there's so there's two different levels of KYC on Galaxy. There's level one KYC which you can complete, and then there's level two KYC which um, it doesn't allow U.S. people to to use. The difference being KYC one has like a daily withdrawal requirement of like. I don't know, like maybe like five thousand um, dollars, and then um, if you get KYC two on Galaxy, then you have um, you. I think it's like unlimited withdrawals, uh, but um, you can definitely still use Galaxy if you're part of the United States. Not saying it's like the best exchange ever or anything. I'm just saying that that it it, it is an option for you. Um, IDEX is a decentralized exchange, so I did read in a report that they're going to institute KYC eventually, but um, but that I don't even know if that's enacted yet, to my knowledge. So not only does IDEX likely have no KYC requirements, there is also I, I believe once it does have KYC restrictions or, or requirements that that the United um, U.S. citizens will still be able to um, to participate. So um, that answers that part of the question. The other part of the question is just exchanges in general. Um, yeah, there there's going to be higher volume exchanges soon, um, but in the meantime, you can use those. Um, I know everyone's kind of waiting eagerly to get on more exchanges. Um, it's getting really easy to talk to exchanges because they see that we're a real project. So um, we're we're working carefully with the right exchanges to um, to do different because we have a lot of marketing potential that we can do with with the Zerobox app. Um, so once we're kind of rolled out with Alpha, um, the ball you'll start to see the ball start rolling with other exchanges. Um, nothing's nothing's. Um, I mean, there obviously we can't really talk about that stuff, but um, there there have been some some um, verbal agreements made um, and then also you know we're we're talking to a bunch of them so uh, we'll leave it at that um, yes that's question one question two is the zero box app going to be available to everyone on iOS Mac at the start or is it limited to a certain number of people can you expand on the partnership with uh, Department Homeland Security um, is this something that's active or prospective? Any plans with current partners to leverage the network on board their technologies? Um, that is from Minnesota Wild Fan 95. Um, so um, all good questions. Um, at the at, at the outset, everyone like at the launch of Alpha, everyone will be able to use the Zerobox app. Um, Everyone who has iOS and Mac, so it'll start out on iOS and Mac first. Yep, um, and there will be um, there will be like an Android rollout as well. So, um, so that so the Android and PC um, applications will come, um, but it'll be iOS, Mac to start, and there won't be any um, won't be any like requirements that, like um, at, at at launch or. or there won't be any, it won't be like a closed um, um, permissioned use of, of the Zerobox application. So that answers that part of the question. Um, as for Department Homeland Security, um, our work with uh, Department Homeland Security is in the early stages and progress was really slowed on that front after the government shut down. Um, so not only does the government move slow, it moves very, very slow when um when it's shut down because it doesn't move at all um so uh, so yeah it's it's very early um it, and we're exploring a lot of things with um with regards to data security um because data breaches are becoming an increasing issue um and 
if, if for something such as the government has a lot of sense of documentation. So, um, and then we're also we're also uh, we're also really excited about our split key uh, authentication wallet as well. Um, so there's there's a lot of different applications, but it is um, it primarily focused on security. Um, when there's more comp concrete information on it, we'll we'll definitely obviously provide that. Um, but we're actually planning to do, as far as partnerships goes, we're planning to do a, like a crypto blitz soon. Um, and that's because we have like usable technology finally. Um, and we're, we're looking to partner with essentially any blockchain or DAP that needs storage, which is pretty much all of them. Um, we don't consider ourselves, um, ourselves a competitor, um, rather a partner to every blockchain out there or blockchain project. Um, so if you have a good connection with other big blockchain projects, let me know so, um, so we can get, um, get like more more introductions going and get the ball rolling but um but there's a lot of like uh, a lot of interest in in decentralized storage believe it or not so um and, well one that works so uh, one that works and one that's fast because there isn't um there isn't a solution out there right now that that can do what we're doing so um that's that's easy so that's a uh, question two Question three. I liked this one. Um, this was a good one. Um, this was from Mobe768. He asks, he, he came in hot with this one. Um, he asks, how can you say with a straight face that the blockchain is free to use when it requires locking up tokens and there's an interest rate? You're just paying through inflation in that case. Seems like EOS 2.0 to me. We'll probably have some last-minute RAM equivalent fee that will be added to act required to actually use the thing. And that's from Mob768. Really good question. Um, uh, yeah, I, I like getting these questions because it, um, it it's it's a lot better than when exchange. Um, a lot more thought-provoking. Um, so uh, I personally don't like saying it's free because it invites a lot of like criticisms. Um, like, well, technically there's a cost here and here and here, and technically it's that way. So you're, 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 you're kind of lying here. And, um, so I don't like saying that because it distracts from what we've, uh, really achieved with our token economics, um, which in essence is, um, there, there, there is no cost involved, um, through innovative token economics. Um, and we're, we're, we're a lot different from anything that's out there. So how I like to actually describe it is we've counterbalanced the cost of inflation with staking requirements, which scale with network growth. So I, I recommend reading our, our token reward and storage protocol paper that you can find on zerochain.net slash research um, to get a good idea of how we navigate around this and how we are fundamentally different from EOS from both token and consensus perspectives. I'll address this in a couple parts. Um, so firstly, almost, uh, almost every blockchain protocol will have some semblance of an inflation mechanism. It's generally how nodes are compensated for a service or for, for providing a service, which generally is just mining, validating, producing blocks. Um, uh, granted, there are some exceptions like IOTA, um, but in essence, with IOTA, the transaction cost is just prevented in or presented in a, a different format by requiring each sender to execute proof of work on a previous transaction. So you're you're basically just doing the mining. Um, you're kind of like splitting up the mining, which is in essence um, a, a cost, a proof of work cost. Um, some iota fan fan uh, fanboys will will critique me on that and say it won't it isn't that costly um, but um, that's so that's another debate but iota also has serious hurdles with achieving fast guaranteed finality which it wouldn't work with a storage protocol like ours and also reliably time stamping transactions is very hard on iota um, I know they say that they're going to fix it um, I haven't really looked at it lately um, but so that's a separate argument to be had but Inflation is, is prevalent on virtually every known blockchain protocol aside from the few outliers like I just explained with IOTA. 
However, even though inflation is prevalent, almost all of these blockchains charge one, a transaction fee, two, cost through inflation, three, they have no underlying asset value. Um, and this is where we set ourselves apart. Uh, the, the key distinction from zero chain to other blockchain protocols is how it approaches those three concepts. So we have an infl inflation rate of roughly 10%. Um, it, it's not f totally final yet, um, but that's pretty much our target. Um, so that, and that's our starting target. Well, we plan to adjust that uh, as the network grows through our governance protocol. Um, so we have an inflation rate of roughly 10%, and we also will technically have a transaction fee as well. But the true genius in our token protocol is how we solve these problems by reducing tokens in circulation. Inflation presents a cost to the value of an asset if it increases the tokens in float, also known as the token circulating so circulating supply so inflation presents a cost if you're just throwing more if you're just growing the supply but the demand staying constant so it, that's that that is the the true cost so if you're increasing the amount of tokens in circulation that's where inflation really starts to present a cost uh, the zero chain token protocol is hot, hardwired for locking and staking so what do I mean by this and why does it matter? Any service that's provided or used on the zero chain network will require locking and staking of tokens. So this in essence means that any participation in the network will result in a reduction of float, floating token supply of ZCN even with the 10% inflation. So blobbers, miners, sharders, all lock tokens, transaction senders lock tokens to get their interest to, to pay for their, their transactions, storage users lock tokens, etc. So while inflation may be occurring at a 10% um, at a 10% uh, rate, its impact on the float supply, the floating circulating supply is counterbalanced by staked and locked tokens so there is no additional cost to the overall float supply in fact it's it's almost it i i don't want to say that it's deflationary um because we have to let this thing actually actually run its course to see um but all of our simulations um show that that there's going to be a lot of locked and staked tokens which it, it directly affects the, the circulating supply and you can verify this in depth on the token protocol paper that, um, that, that I just mentioned. And then additionally, the ZCN is an asset-backed token. Um, EOS kind of has that. I, I, I haven't looked at it re too recently, but I do know that they, they kind of bragged about being um, uh, asset-backed with RAM, um, but the Emin Gunsire actually ran some numbers and determined that the the amount of RAM that you get relative to the token is really not that significant. Um, so we're we're different in the sense that our we're a storage network and we have um, a data storage allocation. So um, ZCN is an asset backed token, um, and, and as the Blobber network grows, the 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 integral storage value of ZCN grows with it. So the more blobbers that are on the network, the more storage value your ZCN has. Um, so this affects the utility of the asset itself. It, it improves the utility as the network grows, as the blobber network grows. So we address the hypothetical cost of a supply increase um, by reducing total coins in circulation through locking and staking on the network. And we provide a token that has actual redeemable market value beyond just speculation. So ether is, you, you know, you need it for gas to pay for your transactions and that, that those fees are gone. You'll never see those again. And then on top of it, there is no redeemable storage value 
for holding ether. Um, but I'm just using ether as an example, but that's what I mean by a redeemable market value. So you can use your ZCN for, a, it, it represents a, a storage allocation. And we'll have a paper soon, out soon by Imperial College detailing the value of ZCN. And it's really, really cool. It's done by, um, I've talked about it before, but um, Andrea Borowski, he is a, um, a really well-respected economist who did a, um, and Sebastian Vervest as well. Those two did a in-depth analysis on our token economics and determined the, the underlying asset value of our token. It's not based on speculation. Um, it's based on the, the actual token value with, um, with different, uh, with, with, with different amounts of blobbers on the network. So it, it goes through if, you know, if we have X terabytes of storage, how much the token is truly worth market rate relative to um, something like AWS or just the going rate for storage. So that's, that's very unique in the space. And that's a really long answer to your question, but um, it was a good one and um, I wanted to clarify that. So that's question three. And last question, question four, uh, we would like to know about the specs of mining, blobbing and sharding. And that is from Crypto Fool 7. Um, I, I also wanna know about the specs as well. I'm eagerly waiting. Um, so yeah, it's um, the specs should be available within a month. Um, I'm looking at kind of starting like a form for everyone to get a gauge of interest and you know give them kind of like the inside edge to um, to getting going with with their rigs. Um, so if if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, let me know on Telegram because I, I'm pretty sure I wanna I kind of just thought of this, but um, let me know on Telegram if you think it's a good idea to get a list going of people that are interested because I plan on running a blobber as well. Um, so maybe we'll start like a separate telegram group for zero chain service providers where we can all strategize and ask really targeted questions um, for everyone that's really interested in supporting the network at the beginning. I think that there would be a ton of benefits, especially because you, you'll pretty much, I mean, the, the, the verifiable random function chooses from like a pool of like 1000 active miners, which when, when the mark, when, when the network really grows, it'll be a lot more competitive to get selected as a miner. But right now we're still a small project. So if you get going as a miner or a sharder or a blobber, you're gonna, you're gonna be providing a service right away. So, um, I think it's an, if you're interested, I think it's an awesome time to time to get going. But, um, but yeah, let me know if that's interesting, interest of interest to you guys. Um, and, um, that's it. So thank you for watching and I will see you all in two weeks because Siswata's monthly live AMA on Twitter will be next week. He does it every month. So be sure to tune into that. We'll, we'll let you know, um, to, uh, to expect it, but thank you for listening and I uh, will see you soon. Bye.